Hey, hey guys, Fragdu here. Thanks for stopping in to look at the new patch notes for Paragon. In this video, I'll be going through a brand new patch which is coming at you right now. Uh, by the time this video is up, it'll probably have just been released. At this current time, the servers have been taken offline to apply this very patch. So, let's get into it. Hopefully you guys are interested in seeing what's coming out. If you are, let me know in the comment section below. Uh, I've built a community around Dirty Bomb, which is Update City at the moment. We're getting a huge update for Dirty Bomb, which I'll be doing a video for as well, but we are here to talk about Paragon, so let's get stuck into some of the changes we can expect in this new patch. So straight out of the gate, a really cool feature being added in. I actually just want to take a brief moment and say this is really, really great. Uh, same that we, ex same thing that we experienced with Dirty Bomb. The community talking to the developers and the developers delivering on uh, what the community was wanting. So here, the community has been very vocal in wanting custom matchmaking, and Epic have turned around and said, "You know what? It's really basic, but you guys really want it, so here you go." So what happens is you'll get five of your mates, and then you get five enemies. Um, you lobby up. You lobby up, you lobby up, you lobby up, and then you uh, enter in a password using the cog gizmo. Um, so, you know, password, enter that in, and then an enemy team of five will then lobby up, and their team leader will enter in that password. And if the pa password matches up, hey presto, all things going well, you get into a custom 5v5 match. Hold your horses guys, there is no XP granted in these modes because it is rough of course and um, we're, they're probably looking into ways to prevent people from farming XP and um, you know doing all sorts of ungodly things that you guys get up to so that's that's really cool, I'm, I'm really excited to see how this works. Currently I have a few people on my list, I'm not sure how many are really into getting into the competitive side of it, but I can't wait, and it's great that they're supporting it. I think this with the replay feature, man, good job. Next up, they've noted here that existing replays will no longer be compatible with this update. So just a just a thing we expect with these clone debaters. Um, the replay system automatically saves replays of every game that you play so that you can go back in and review how great you are. Or maybe, you know, polish up some tactics that didn't quite work. I know that I've had so many games where I try new things and they just don't quite work. And I can go back in and see why. Uh, you know, was it just bad luck? Was someone in the jungle at the wrong time coming out to gank? Or was it just a silly idea? Um, so that's unfortunate, but of course we expect these kind of things in early beta. So I'll move along to general changes now. Added early support for private matches as ergo what we discussed up the top. Added a timer on the reticle for travel mode and shadow plane. So when we press B on our keyboards to go back to base, in our uh, reticle, aka crosshair, we will now get a countdown uh, timer of when we're going to appear back in base. So that's pretty cool. It's just a bit more information that you can get. Hopefully you can switch that on and off. I personally don't really... You get a feel for how long you need, and I kind of enjoy that that you know panic as you see someone running down lane at you and you wonder will you make it or not I guess for the very competitive people you're gonna know in seconds and you're gonna have a better idea so very good move next added in game uh, sorry in combat movement speed slow to super and jungle minions so they're going through here and saying you know what we know that we've created some pretty crazily speeded uh, minions in the jungles you know they're very hard to hit uh, when they're on the move so they've just kind of pushed it down a bit so that they're less jumpy in combat and it's easier to see them coming in uh, where they're going and hit them on the fly. Next, very early support for mouse and keyboard input on PS4. Is there anyone on my channel who is playing Paragon on PS4? I don't think there is, but of course when I make the how-to videos I do accommodate for PS4s because there's no PC elitist over here. Well, there kind of is, but hey, you know what? We'll let you play. No, I'm just kidding, of course. Uh, next, the escape key now cancels the selection. This allows the user to cancel the key selection in the controls menu and prevents them from binding escape, which causes other problems. So, quite a paradox I had going on there. If you 
okay, I want to, yeah, I want to re-enter re this key, and you're like, oh, actually, you know what, I don't. Can't escape is now, um, you know, part of that key, and that causes all sorts of craziness. So that's cool that it is fixed now. Polish on lighting and post-processing in Agora, darker areas are more lit. Now, they keep talking about the map in, like, a specific term, like, um, they don't say the map, they're saying post-processing in Agora. Now, they might just be referencing the world in general, or are they hinting at here that they've got other sort of beta maps in going, and this is only one of the maps that we can expect to be playing. Interesting. I hope they don't get too ahead of themselves and start smashing out maps left, right, and center. Um, I'm a big Dota fan, and of course, uh, it doesn't take a great deal of uh, change in the map itself. It's the gameplay that changes that keeps it interesting. So, you know, uh, getting back to it though, of course, they're saying that darker areas are more lit. So, I really am looking forward to the art passes I always do in these games. I think they're fantastic. I'm a bit more art sidey. So, very cool. Next, players can no longer cast travel mode while falling. So, Apparently, previously you were able to be falling off a ledge or something of that nature by the sounds of it, and you could still press B to travel back to base. So this makes uh, a lot more sense and I think is more fair. You shouldn't be able to start traveling when you're falling. Of course, it makes escape that fraction of a second better, but uh, visually it just doesn't make sense, you know, in, in this world. Uh, I, I agree with this change, of course. What do you guys think? Um, next, fixed an issue where recall wouldn't start if used while in travel mode. So this is a little bug that was happening where you were in travel mode, aka sprinting, and uh, you tried to recall and it just wouldn't work. Another thing I hope, I'm hoping they've added in here is that the a bit more reliability to pressing shift, um, or maybe your cooldown for when you can start to press shift again, because obviously there's a little bit of a bug at the moment where you'd want to start running and it doesn't quite always work as nice as it could or maybe it just there's something stopping you and they haven't quite visually uh, given us the information about what's happening there so lastly in this section is update for clarification card xp is now referred to as card power card power so cool little bit of features everyone knows that this game is fantastic and everyone who's played it uh, loves the f out of it the only thing is uh, it's got so much to offer and because it is early they haven't found the best way to communicate this so it's just another way that they're letting us chew this information better so they're referring to it as card power making it a little bit easier to follow very cool what do you guys think about that let's move along now to the AI changes so the AI, they've stopped bots from using friend support abilities on teammates who are too far away. So a little bit of uh, bot hacking there going on. They fixed that. And they've also fixed bots movement regarding abilities targeting so that bots don't end up inside of rocks. So we've got wall hacking and skill abusing bots going on. They've been nerfed. Uh, not nerfed, they've been patched. So that's really cool. A little bit of, uh, it's good to see how many of these things that we're dealing with at the moment are getting squashed out. We're only a quarter, like, we're not even a quarter away through the patch notes and they've already discussed some major changes to the game. Very cool. Let's go and and have a look at the cards. Cards, Honor the Pure, replaced broken bonus ability with unique active, plus shield based on your level to nearby allies, cooldown 120 seconds, increased cost from two to four, so they've realized that that's probably a bit nutso and they've changed that around, which is fantastic. Fix for stasis gem, rapidly jittering, so a basic bug there causing visual problems. Active items that do not consume charges will now not show when it's on cooldown. Um, visually, they're telling us a better story here, so as I said before, a lot of great things in this game, just because it's in beta, uh, visually, this you know, the, what's happening in the game isn't always making it across the mark. So that's great. It's another way for us to be more in the loop as to what's happening while it's happening. And lastly, added, uh, added a delay to prevent Blink Charm from activating before Portal Tone was done activating. So there we go. Yet again, as I was just saying, it's just it's stopping the confusion. Unlike that sentence, which is doing exactly the opposite. Moving along now to replay. So, we've had replays renamed to watch. I don't mind that too much. That's pretty good because it, it makes sense. Um, it's literally what you were going to say if you were going to do the thing you wanted to do, if it was watching. 
I'm going to go watch a game, so that's good. Added Paragon TV tab that shows the live only games. That's really cool. I like that. I think it makes a lot of sense too, because TV has that feeling that you can't, you know, pause and play, and of course there's all sorts of things to help you do that. But um, in the real world, but of course, yeah, that that's good. I like that as well. Change the recent tab to only show completed games, so that's good. I didn't even know you could not complete a game. I have rage quit it out before, and it basically made me quit the game. <laughs> it was like, you know what? Naughty corner. You want to quit the game? You don't get to go and play another one. You wait. You sit there and you wait until the game is over. So I thought it would have saved that as well. Of course, I haven't actually thought to try that. Um, Fix for replay recording continuing after exiting a replay. I do things a little bit differently when I record. I use uh, shadow play with the HUD turned off and I let it let me do the editing that way rather than in game. I just find that the quality can be a little bit higher. I will go in and have another look though. It's just, um, of course, you don't want to have a very specific way of recording one game when I do like to make uh, videos for Dirty Bomb and other games as well. Uh, removed extra white space around exported animated GIFs. Cool, very cool. Just another little bug that we're getting, and that's all excellent. I'm liking everything I see in that section. Moving along now to the UI. So they've updated the FX on the Harvester's placement pad, so that's cool. I don't know how many times I've seen new players run up and not really know what the hell they're looking at when they're looking at a Harvester. Um, and it is confusing at the start because it's a new concept uh, for a lot of us. I don't think there's any games that I'm aware of that use this concept. So that'll be interesting to see how they can better communicate what needs to happen or what is happening with the Harvesters. Uh, next along, adding tooltips to scoreboard header. Cool. Uh, good for new players. I'm sure there's bits and pieces in there. You, uh, um, Epic Games is really good at this sort of thing, so I think it won't be as, as chum as the other ones. So, Hero Passives now display in the main menu play tab and the ability section. To be honest, it took me a while to know that they even had passives. Um, it wasn't just for a few couple of days before um, I started making the Paragon videos, I was like, huh, they've got passives, so that's really cool. Um, if you weren't on the forums much, you didn't know much about that, so cool. Uh, next up is improved visualization of shared card power. Again, um, one of the really big things, especially in a multiplayer game, if a team thinks a certain thing, their perception is their reality. So you might be stealing things uh, that you weren't aware of and that you're not, is what I'm trying to get at. So that's cool. Next is a fix for in-game FPS counter displaying 0.0, .0 point. Um, cool. I don't use that, but that's pretty cool. New ability tooltip shows mana cost. Cool dance, binding an icon. Yeah! Fuck. Yeah, this is so good. Uh, in a game that you take seriously, especially like a MOBA, and you go, okay, so I'm going to go in here, I'm going to go, yeah, this costs this much, and this costs that much. Uh, before you were just running by the city of pants, so, or memory, which, uh, you know, is not what you want. So that's pretty cool. I'm really looking forward to getting in now and sort of having a more clear story of what I'm up to. Uh, what I'm able to get up to, I should say, uh, and for mana costs and things like that, so that's fantastic. More style updates on the card tooltips and hero tooltips. Go ahead, do your thing, make it pretty. I like it. Updated affinity material to allow specifying the accent color. Updated affinity material. That's a bit confusing. See, I gotta stop calling things in my mind their own special word, and I think as I learn the game more, I'll go into and learn these a bit more. So updated all places affinities are displayed to use the material. Updated corruption to be dark purple. Combined rarity and card type in the card tooltip. Max level now displays appropriately in the XP wheel tooltip. Again, just a bit more clear to what's happening to the player. Remove the confirmation dialogue when a team has been found during matchmaking and updated how active items display. Cool. That's a bit, yeah, it's a bit broad. Updated how active items display. Yeah, cool. They just made it look cooler, I'm guessing. And updated the super minion death effects. Cool, cool. Um, very cool, actually. I'm liking all the bits and pieces they're adding. Let's go have a look at what they've done for the hut. Another area that I'd like to see some improvement. So card power received from teammates now draws lower in order to be less obtrusive. Added visual feedback on card power and player XP meter when a level occurs. Awesome, I like that. So, yeah, just making it a little bit prettier, making the story clearer as to what's happening throughout the game. Cool, thank you very much. Let's have a look at the audio.
Added water footsteps, water lands, and water jumps for heroes. Added card activation sound. Added hero spawn sound. Main menu music now persistent through loading screens. Cool. Just a little, you know, a little, little polish, a little audio-tastic polish. I like it. All heroes. Added camera lens effect timer to the recall ability to show casting time to recall. Beautiful. Removed Twin Blast, Howitzer, and Muriel as recommended heroes. Ooh. Okay. Updated lobby animations for Sparrow, Gideon, Grux, and Steel. Okay, cool. Just a little bit of a, a cool pass. So let's get into now the individual hero bits and pieces. So for Decker, we see that they've added vocal efforts when attacking, walking, jumping, etc. And they've added new art for the containment fence ability. And it's looking pretty cool. I like that. It's like in a sort of gladiator arena style thing, which is obviously a cool little look. Not bad at all. And of course, because uh, it's so early on in the piece, yeah, a lot of the um, audio for characters still isn't in there. So that's really cool. And FX polish on stasis bomb ability, so they've made that look a little bit nicer. I already thought that looked pretty good, so that's cool. I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing what that looks like now. Now, let's look at gadget. Seek and destroy projectile radius indicator is now the proper size. Fixed a bug when using Sticky Mine that prevented other abilities from cast until the mine landed on the ground. Very cool. So that's um, obviously something that a lot of Gadget fans have picked up. I haven't played a lot of Gadget myself. She frustrated me because it's one of those characters where uh, you've got to really know what you're doing to do well. Where I'm playing a lot of Murdoch at the moment, which is like the, the basic not super basic like Twin Blast, but he's a basic character, so cool. Um, fixed a bug causing collision issues after casting Sticky Mine. Let's have a look straight on now into Gideon, now listed as a recommended hero to play in the hero select screen. I'd agree with this move. He is, he's got a lot of escape and his ulti is semi-safe, so you know, that's, that's cool. I think that's a good move. Added subtle wind and hover audio to travel mode. Cool. I like the sound of that. Now having a look at Howitzer or Howie. Uh, if rocket ability is cancelled or replaced by another ability during the targeting state, it will now go on a short cooldown. Added new targeting in for... New targeting in for? In for. Wow. I don't know if my knowledge of the England is really low, but that doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Uh, into the rocket ability, reticle now changes color to red when placed over an enemy target. Kalari added Kalari vocal efforts for attacking, walking, jumping, etc. Fixed a bug where Kalari's backflip ability would be cancelled when targeting with the death sentence. Kalari's passive ability, marked for death, will now only trigger vision and marking symbols uh, when she is still alive. So, of course, a lot of uh, Dota players will know that Kalari is similar to uh, Bloodseeker in some sense. When enemies are low, they get certain things happen to them. So now that's only going to happen when she's still alive. That's cool. I agree with that. Muriel. Muriel will now drop the orb time if she tries to use her reversal of fortune while holding it. Thank you. So annoying. I was getting really sick of that. So Muriel has an ulti ultimate ability where she can teleport or transport to any other player on the map. Um, and sort of help them out. Her, she's a support role, if you don't know Paragon yet. Um, and what you can do in the game is you can go and kill a boss, he drops an orb, and then you have to take it to a certain spot on the map to activate it, and you get a huge buff. Now, one of the, one of the things overlooked earlier on, or maybe not, but they've decided to, to take it now, is that um, Uriel could just uh, use that ultimate to get right. If her teammate was standing at the point, she, she picks it up and she transports there, and bingo, you get the buff. So that's good that they've taken that out. I hated that. Uh, fixed a bug with concentrated ground ability with a uh, temporarily, temporarily disabled reticle. Fixed a bug with reversal of fortune that allowed card activation while flying. Cool, that's cool. So you have to get all your, so your stuff done now. It doesn't matter anyway because when you hit the ground, everyone in the area is knocked up, in my opinion. Next is Rampage. Added vocal efforts when attacking, walking, jumping, etc. Awesome. Uh, all these like character bits and pieces, like adding depth to the characters, is what I get excited about in art passes and stuff, I know. Uh, next, Severog. So, Severog's got a few here, and rightly so, because there's a few I ran in when I was playing him. I ran into, I should say, when I was playing him. Fixed an issue with the Colossal Blow ability, where you can start swinging, turn, and hit the player in that new direction. Cool, I didn't know you could do that. Fix the challenger skin textures to display properly. Excellent. So um, his weapon was displaying as a grey 
like a, a template a default sort of thing so that's cool added the cooldown reduction when colossal blow is interrupted shortened the timing window on the hammer basic attack so that it won't trigger off an inadvertent double click whoops sped up the activation time for colossal blow ability so the targeting begins immediately after activating the ability to compensate for the adjustment the swing animation is slowed a little bit okay yeah, it was a bit strange actually when you activate his ulti, it kind of felt like there was this weird, unnecessary, like, beginning bit to it, so that's cool. That sounds really good, I can't wait to get in and play him again. Let's now have a look at the bug fixes. Fixed heroes replaying their spawn animation when a new team member is found. Yeah, cool. Well, that's just a nice fix. Um, in the lobby sort of area when you're waiting for a team, um, is a cool effect that when someone joins in, they kind of, they look like they've just joined in. You know, if sparks fly and they hit the ground kneeling and they stand up and they, you know, they wait for the other players to join in. But unfortunately, there was a glitch where this would happen over and over and over again and just look silly. So that's cool. Fix for having recent players, blocked players, etc. showing up for recommended friends on PS4. Exactly what you don't want. Uh, fix an issue where enemies shooting shielded players under tower would not take aggro. Oh, I've never run into that. I've never personally noticed it. Cheeky. Separate the activation fail message from the cooldown fail message. Activation fail will display a message that says ability not ready that appears when it's on when it's not cooldown or low energy related. Address an issue where the AI could be killed instantly when they spawn. Interesting. PS4 pressing circle while on social panel status and blah 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 does not take the user back to the friends list. That's cool. I'm playing it on PC as I mentioned, but that's that's obviously good news for PS4 players. Fixed several issues with the collision around Agora. Again, they're saying Agora. I don't, I'm not sure if they're just trying to get us used to that's the world that they're in, or maybe this is just one map of many planned. Fixed a collision issue with shadow pads. A collision issue with shadow pads. What is a shadow pad? <laughs> In the comments, what's a shadow pad, boys? Fix the bug for targeting now displaying while in the shadow plane. So that is all of the update in... Um, well, I was going to say summary, but we went through all of it. So, pretty cool. Pretty cool. I'm looking forward to seeing uh, if this matches what we get and, um, you know, what other things to expect. And I think it will be two weeks now until we get our little next character update too. So definitely going to be an update for that one as well. Looking forward to it, guys. Thanks very much for watching. And as always, happy fragging.